Hey, well, welcome back to Alice Customs Project Car TV. I'm back on the Scout. I don't know which episode it is, but some of you, many of you will probably recognize a lot of these pieces. I have some more just kind of here and there. They've all been either, they've all been media blasted. Some of them it's soda, some of them it's glass. The ones that I've got for the most part sitting here are ready to get locked up in primer and really could get painted. Um, we're going with a solid color, so it's not going to be super important that uh, you know we put all the pieces together and paint it all at one time. So we could paint the window frame, for example. We could paint the grill, some of the other parts. Um, my first step is I really want to get these into primer. You know That would lead me down to really just a few parts that I still need to do some body work on as well as I'm still working the bodywork on the actual cab or the, the body itself. Just need to start getting some of this stuff finished up because July's coming and that was the date we were shooting for. So for now what I've got for you is I bought a paint booth. Okay, well it's the next day from setting up the big tent. I gathered up all my parts or my products. We're gonna try getting some primer onto the parts that are in bare metal. Not everything because I still got some that I'm doing metal work on, but you know, we gotta get some of this stuff done. The product we're gonna be using today is an epoxy primer. I picked the Tamco brand. There are no uh, sponsors or anything with this. This is just the brand I picked. Uh, based on recommendations from friends that are painters, and I am not. You're going to see me screw something up for sure, but I don't know what it'll be yet. So this is the uh, DTA 2K Epoxy Primer from Tamco. It's part number HP661. And then with that, you need a hardener, HH661C for the hardener. Um, I bought a gallon because eventually... We'll be doing the whole body of the truck. We'll do all of the individual parts. And this locks in the metal, protects the metal. The idea is forever. Once you spray this, you have seven days to put the next product on, if you will. Um, you can respray. You can go outside of seven days, but then you have to sand this and then put another coat of the epoxy on it. So the goal here is only spray stuff that you can get to the next stage in at least seven, in no more than seven days. And what I mean by that is we're gonna put this epoxy primer on. Many of the parts that I'm putting this on don't need any body work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the DTA on, then we're gonna wait about 24 hours. Then we're gonna shoot an, the next product, which is a high build primer, uh, we'll just lightly sand that, probably three or 400 grit, and then we can go straight from that to a sealer, and then we can put color on it. So you're gonna, so it's about a three day, maybe a four day process, depending on how much time you have. But I can get all of that done. I don't have anything that's gonna interrupt that process before I've got those parts in color. Now, everything that's going to sit for a while we're in i'm in a super dry climate so i can leave stuff in bare metal for years and the stuff that i'm still working on i'm just going to leave in bare metal because i know i'm not going to make the seven day window for this and you basically need to be ready to top coat within seven days of starting this dta this epoxy primer or plan to sand the whole all the parts again which Maybe that works for you. You know, maybe you, if you're in a moisture ridden area, you lock it in with the epoxy, set it aside, go back in two weeks, sand it, and move on. You know, I'm just going to rely on the fact that I'm in a dry climate and I can leave stuff in bare metal and then try and work whatever I'm doing in a seven day window. So today's product, project is to, we've got to do a little bit of cleanup on the grill and some of the parts that go under the hood and I don't know I've got a couple things that I want to get into this uh, probably even the doors I may try and get those sprayed in this DTM I'm sorry DTA so we've got about I don't know 10 items and this is mostly just so I can start learning the process because I'm not a painter 
You notice any of the high-end cars that I've built, they all go to professional painters. I'm only painting this one because it's for me and I'm if if I make a mistake, I either have to deal with it myself or, you know, where it's my time and a little bit of product or I'll just live with the mistake, you know, a run or whatever. Primer-wise, we're using the Tamco products. When we get to the paint, we're using a PPG product. We have ourselves a brand new Iwata Air Air Gangs Gunsta. Air Gunsta something. Gunso. I don't know. This is the spray gun we're using. I ordered mine with a 2.0 tip. Um, this product supposedly lays down pretty well with as small as a 1.5. Uh, tip but the next product the DTM they recommend a 2.5 unless you're gonna reduce it a little bit which I will and I've got a buddy who sprays it through a gun with a 1.8 tip and that just describes the size of the nozzle where the mixture is coming out or the fluid is coming out so I'm no expert there go watch uh, paint society has some great videos on paint uh, paint application paint uh, guns and a bunch of other stuff. So in fact, I'm gonna watch one of their videos to relearn how to set up the gun before I spray anything onto my panels. But I bought this gun um, brand new. I've since, uh, along with it, I bought a water separator, which is this piece down here. And I bought a Iwata, uh, flow meter gauge whatever uh let's see it's called the it's called the impact controller 2 and that's like i said an iwata part the water separator is just one that was highly recommended i think I got both of those recommended from the paint society youtube channel and then i've also taken another recommendation they had which was to put this adapter on here so that you can use the collapsible throwaway cups which saves some cleaning time. I will put links to all of these part numbers in the description. They're all Amazon links. And then I'll also put a link to Tamco's website for the different products I'm using so that you'll have that information as well. All right guys, so you see me getting some primer on these parts. These need to sit up overnight now. Unfortunately, I don't have a rack yet to hang parts that I can spray both sides. I'm gonna be in town tomorrow, so that's something I'm gonna look into, as well as kind of with some kind of PVC framework that I can stand up inside the, the tent so that I can turn that fan off, because um, basically that fan's gonna have to run all night now, just so I can keep those parts from, you know, from the tent collapsing down on them, so be really nice if I could have you know even if I just did 10 by 10 where it could fold in a little bit but it's not going to touch any parts that you've got going on because you could scoot them together or whatever uh, so I'm going to work on that project a little bit tomorrow um, as well as trying to get some kind of racks where I can hang parts and shoot them from there all right I'll see you tomorrow uh, good morning it's day three of getting primer on parts in here so again I'm using Tamco product no sponsor. Uh, this one is what they call their DTM, direct to metal, or basically it's their high build primer. Uh, I bought this, this particular one in white, and then after this, on parts that are getting painted, we'll add a sealer. On parts that are getting just a bed liner type product, we'll be able to go right after this straight to, the, straight to that. Um, we can reduce this out and basically thin it out enough to spray it like a sealer. So some of the parts we may need to do that as well. So this morning I've mixed up about 16 ounces of the, the primer and the hardener that goes with it. And those uh, work together to give you a sandable primer that's high build, meaning it's got a pretty good mill thickness and when you sand it, you should get a pretty nice finish. Um, and I'm told, haven't used it yet, I'm told that this stuff sands really easy, whereas the epoxy is a little, uh, a little harder to sand. It's a little harder product. The nice thing, the, one of the reasons I've swapped colors here is so 
uh, as you're sanding, you can, as you go through a layer, if you start it, you know, in our case, we've got our epoxy primer is gray. So as we're sanding this white primer, as we go through the layers, if we get to the gray, we know we need to stop or we're going to end up trying to, you know, reseal or re-epoxy the product, which, or the part, which we really don't want to go into the epoxy. We want to stop at the, the high build primer if we're getting down that far. Then we just spray on some more high build and, you know, you can spot spray it or if you've got a whole panel that needs it, we can spray that. So I've got that in the same gun with the 2.0 tip. This is much thicker than the other product was, than the epoxy. The epoxy really probably worked very good with a 1.5 or a 1.8 tip. This recommends a 2.0 to a 2.5. So I had the, the material level turned down previously. We'll probably end up turning it up a little bit, but we'll adjust our gun. Then we'll get in there and shoot the primer. I got covered in the stuff, you know, just, just the fine mist and you take a shower and you can wash it all off, it was fine. I went and bought some little paint suits, so I'm gonna put in a jumpsuit and uh, got some more face masks, breathing masks, you know, we've all been wearing those for years, but went and picked up some new ones. The only thing I've gotta do is get in there and just kind of blow everything off with the fans running. I did build my framework inside the, uh, paint booths just so. so I could turn the fans off overnight and it worked worked out awesome I used one inch PVC also built some racks yesterday so I could hang the parts rather than needing to lay them all down that way I can spray both sides at once so should be able to get through this a little quicker unfortunately the temperature is a little low so it's gonna take a little while longer to dry today but that's what it is. So anyway, I'm going to get the fans turned on, get my little jumpsuit on, get in there and get these sprayed. Well, this piece is ready to go back in the paint booth. We're gonna spray some black paint in a few spots, uh, like inside this vent pipe and a couple other places where panels have to match together uh, so that we don't want bed liner between them. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot some black paint in those areas. And then once that's dry, we'll uh, tape it off and then shoot some black bed liner on here. And this is just one of about I don't know, 80 parts that still need to be scuffed and top coated in some form. Some will be like this, where it needs a sandable primer put on there, a high build primer, touched up, and then I, I burned through it in two places. So we've got to recoat that with some more high build white. And then from there I can shoot, uh, this piece will get painted black as well. So, you know, we're gonna be mixing black paint a few times, but. But yeah, for now it needs another coat of the high build primer and some more sanding. Welcome back. This is how far I got. And not nearly as far as I'd hoped, but I am essentially out of time. A, I need to get you a video out. 
and B, we're going on a family vacation, so trying to uh, do any more on this is just going to have to wait. I'm also very tired. It's a lot of work. Painters make their money because it's a lot of work. I have sanded and primed and sanded and primered and more sanding and more primer and more primer and um, basically I had hoped that I would have the whole truck into a high build primer by this time and what it's come down to is I, I put this back bar in the roll bar uh, and then I added the two bars up front that tie to the windshield frame well that burned up more than a day when it was all over because I didn't like the first version of the forward bar, the front bars, so I ended up cutting those loose, making some new ones. About a day and a half that I spent screwing with all that. Once I had all that done, I had to uh, make sure all the welds were done, grind any burrs off, whatever, and then sand it all down. So then I epoxy primered the roll bar and the floor and the sides of the truck. Uh, and then you gotta let that dry for 24 hours. So then you come back the next day or more likely a, little, more likely a day and a half later and you put on your high build primers on everything, sanded all that down. I wanted to make the welds look real clean without grinding the weld, so I bondoed all those and then you gotta sand all that bondo. Anyway, there was a lot of work in getting the roll bar prepped and then getting it painted. Then once I had it painted, I had to let that dry for about 14 hours, then I was able to tape it off, sand the floor, do all my seam sealer, put a, a sealer coat of, you know, a primer sealer on the whole floor and the walls. Once that was done, then I could put my bed liner on, and I did about three coats of bed liner, which you have to leave an hour between each of the coats, so... You burn up another half of a day just in the spraying of that. Um, I did need to touch up the firewall a little bit because I wanted it to be white down to the seam where the floor comes up into the firewall. That just kind of replicates where the floor mats would have ended. So, um, And that's the reason, the reason I did this in Maroon. I think we've talked about it before, was that there were rubber floor mats in this truck to begin with that were this color. That floor mat, it's a, it was a big floor mat with sound deadener liner under it. Those floor mats aren't available. You can buy a carpet kit, but you can't buy that, that uh, rubber mat, or at least I haven't found it. So this was my next best thing. I, I used black bed liner on the underside of the truck, now the maroon on the top side. That should make it to where you know, I can come in here and wash it out. We can get it muddy. We'll put some regular floor mats in here just to catch stuff off your feet and not tear up the bed liner so early. But overall, I think it looks really sharp. I did not try and smooth out all the dents and the dings and the everything that's in the bed of the truck. Those are there from 50 years this year of use. And, you know, there's I did fill holes and that kind of stuff. But I just did what it took to make it look good and fresh, not brand new. Um, next up, basically to work the outside of the truck. The inside is now basically done. Still have to sand and fill the outside quarter panels. There's d work on both doors. They're, they're rotted out on the bottom. Both doors are going to need work. The tailgate is horrendous. It looked good until we blasted it. So that's got to come back yet. Um, the windshield frame looks real good. I just need to sand it, paint it. Uh, cow panel looks real good. Just need to sand it and paint it. Um, still have one fender to do with the cutout uh, to put that Ford flare in there. 
and then to match the inner fender on that side. So that's both the driver's side. So there's still a ton of work to do to this. I'm just not going to get to right away. So I think that's it for this video. I have about seven days of work in finishing to this point, but I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun when it's done overall. Uh, this maroon kind of looks more rust, but maroon color paint, we took the original glove box down and had them match that, color match it. That It's faded, you know, so it's, uh, it, but we've got the right color based on the color that was in the trucks. Well, the glove box and the dash are all sun faded, so they will get painted with the same color the roll bar and the floor is. But it, it is the color that the truck originally was, so or what the truck was when I started taking it apart with nearly 47 years, 48 years of sun damage. So, um, but close enough. It's, I'm happy with the color that it came out. Up next is just to finish the outside of the truck, get it painted white, add the pinstripe, and then we'll come back and work on the top. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all the other YouTube stuff. And I'll see you again on the Alice Custom Project Crazy TV. Let's get watching.